I want to see 20,000 likes on this video. Make NBA 2K great again. Yo, what's good, y'all? Before we hop into this video, I want to let you guys know the merch is out right now. The new Send Invite shirts is out. Go cop up. The link is in the description. The link is inside the comment section. Make sure when you cop it up, make sure you take a picture, send it to me on the gram, send it to me on Twitter, and I'm gonna repost you and everything like that. Appreciate all the support from you guys, man. We going crazy with the merch. <laughs> oh, by the way, y'all know where this logo is from. Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy iPod King Cardi here. I want to welcome you guys to a new video. Today, I got something crazy to talk about. I've been thinking about this since NBA 2K20 came out, and I am sorry that I didn't drop this video sooner, but this is something that we really need to talk about. I'm sorry, man. I want to talk about making NBA 2K great again i want to talk about making nba 2k great again because i am sick and tired of seeing all the comments saying 2k is trash this is such a shitty game why am i playing this game why are you still uploading this game who even streams this game it's just so many comments coming from every which way about how bad 2k has gotten over the years and without even realizing it sometimes i say some of the same things i'm, I'm gonna be brutally honest with you guys i know y'all be talking about oh ipod signed a contract we ain't talking about that ndas is for a reason we getting money over here let me put my hat back on we're gonna we're gonna save this hat for another part of this video but basically the premise is that this game hasn't been good in years yeah there was a little bit of light at the tunnel last year but so many people are mad at the way that the part came out this year that they're saying that 2K20 can be one of the worst 2Ks of all time. I'm not going to sit up here and let people say that 2K20 is one of the worst 2Ks of all time. We all know what's the worst NBA 2K of all time. Don't get it effed up at all. What I'm going to tell you guys is a couple things that I have on my wish list, which I will be sending to everybody that works at 2K. I don't care if you're a dev. I don't care if you work for marketing. I don't care if you work with creators. I don't care if you work in the back picking up trash or something. This is for you. First thing on my list I want to talk to you guys about. The PlayStation 5. And whatever other consoles come out. I know the Stadia just came out with NBA 2K. I know we have it on PC. I know we have it on Xbox. I know the Switch is out. That's all fine and dandy. But I want to talk to you guys about the PS5 because I am a PlayStation guy. Now, we've seen many games come out on this console that tested the time of the console. And everybody knows what I'm going to say first. Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto has tested the time of the PS4. It has literally been out on PS4 since the beginning. It still has one of the highest user playing bases. It has some of the dopest DLC content that constantly comes out. They probably drop new DLC almost like every month and a half, two months maybe. Don't quote me on that, but they come out with a lot of DLC all the time. Don't forget, they have a big creator uh, platform base. This game is playable right now. Yeah, they might have a couple price drops over the years and a couple sales, but I know Grand Theft Auto is still 60 bones. So with that being said, when it comes to a console generation in a video game, I want 2K to be the first sports game that tests the time of the console. Now, I know a lot of people are probably going to be in the comment section like, iPod, shut the fuck But what I need y'all to understand is, if 2K comes out with one sole game, or even two or three, I'll max it at three. If they come out, with one game, I'm not talking about two and three no more, we back to one. They come out with one game and they work on this one game to make sure that this game works and they add in a system where ranks can supersede the longevity of the game like uh, Grand Theft or they can come out with different seasons like Fortnite, which I'll definitely be diving into. If they do that, this will fix almost everything. Cause guess what? One thing you need to understand about 2K and a lot of other gaming companies that come out with sports games is they are annual games. 
which means when the dev team gets to go ahead on the video game, let's say this is the first 2K that ever came out. When they got to go ahead to say, okay, we're making 2K, they made 2K, right? There wasn't really a, a base behind 2K too much where we could complain about the game. Nobody really were able to voice their opinion. So when it came to putting out 2K and they updating a few rosters and then coming out with the next NBA 2K, everything was fine. Now, when the game drops, everybody has a voice we as a consumer have a voice to say something's not working in the game we need it immediately fixed so guess what 2k does they fix it they patch it they find some work around to try to fix what we all talk about and yell about on reddit twitter instagram facebook whatever but when they do this it's cool but when the next game is ready to start development Not the neighborhood. We're splitting teams. Oh, you oh you want to work on 2K21? All right, go ahead. We'll try to do what we can here and see if we can find a workaround on 2K20. But don't, I don't ever want you to, don't even think about coming back to 2K20. I need you over there. And that's the main problem with annual games. If the concentration is going to be split between the game that's out now, which they're already calling it the prior game. In their mind, once new development starts, that's the prior game. They're working on something new. If they have their concentration split, the prior game will never ever get the, the best attention. And guess what? When a new game come out, guess what happened to the prior game? Whatever problems it had with that last patch, those problems will still be there until they cut the servers off. And you're going to have to deal with that. Especially... I, I come from the hood. I know when money is hard to come by. Don't get it effed up. Like, I, I ain't live a crazy life where I had everything. I know the struggle. So when the game come out for 60 bones, you play that game, and then the next year, the next game come out for 60, and you done spent the 160 to $200 on the, the prior year's game, you like, bro, like, I really ain't got it. One NBA 2K, right? Now, this game is made by 2K Sports. I have a couple different options for you guys on the naming of the game. Instead of keeping the whole NBA 2K20 and everything like that, you guys did that. You did 20 years running. Stop. What you guys should do for the next game, maybe call it 2K Sports NBA 2020 or 2019 or whatever the case may be. Because I wanted to go like the actual NBA season. Maybe you can go NBA 2K 2019 to 2020 season. You know what I mean? Put that in the drink so when you have the seasonal games coming out, you can easily put that on a graphic and, and go digital. You know what I mean? And if people have hard, hard copies and stuff like that, that's all fine and dandy. You just got a collector's item. And now I know what you guys are thinking. 2K will never be able to do that. That would be a conflict of interest because what would happen to the people that played the year before? They would already have the game. They'll probably have to buy a little bit of DLC, right? Think about DLC for a minute. If you've ever played a game like Destiny or anything like that, those games came out and then dropped a huge DLC that gave that game more years of lifespan. Annual games just ain't it no more. I'm sick and tired of seeing annual games. We need something different. So check it out. If a player gets the game, right, and they say, all right, I want to get the game. I know that I got the game in June or something like that, right? And in October, the next 2K would have supposed to come out. That player that bought that game in June, that's tough luck. You just spent $60 on the game, right? But there's a new iteration, maybe a new world or something, or a new map or something, that when you go to that next spot within the 2K, you start over completely. Now, let's talk about Fortnite for a moment. When you go on Fortnite, right, and you play the seasons, what what is the number one thing that everybody keeps throughout Fortnite? Their skins, their items, and sprays, and, and dances, and all of that. They keep all those items through every season. So why not let us do that on 2K? You know what I mean? So when a new game come out, when you get to whatever superstar, whatever you're grinding, whatever rep, or whatever the case may be, depending on if those people want to go, if they want to go level route, like where you're in a whole new level, maybe you have a, a doper icon to somebody else, like a, a founder's icon or something like that from Apex, if you got a founder's edition, maybe you got a founder's icon to show how long you've had that game throughout its lifespan. You know what I mean? Because I know it's going to be those things where it's like, 
why would I get a game and keep buying DLC every year from the first original game? Give people incentives to keep buying the DLC because we all know 2K is gonna cut off the servers. I watched an Agent Double Zero video where he talked about Ronnie 2K tweeting out it's feasible to up to uh, turn servers back on. Once they cut the servers off after two years, they're not going back. There's no coming back from that. So you got two years to play your game and all of that. Maybe you say to yourself, okay, I played NBA 2K 2019 to 2020, but maybe I don't play NBA 2K uh, 2020 to 2021. And I wait to get the new DLC for NBA 2K 2021 to 2022. Maybe I'll wait a year and not buy that new DLC, play on the servers or whatever. So when my servers get cut off, I could just go to the new new. You feel me? Because sometimes maybe people want to skip something. Like, you know, people skip iPhone generation. Some people be like, man, I, got, I had an iPhone 8 this whole time. Oh, yeah? You ain't get a new iPhone X? No. Well, guess what? The, the uh, iPhone 11 is out. Oh, I might cop that because of the new camera. Some people skip things. So why not give people the option to skip that next season of the game? Because, dog, when you think about it in hindsight, it's right to make this game revolving around the NBA season. So, for instance, when you want to update rosters and stuff like that, that's super duper easy because we know when a, when a game first come out, they trying to push the graphics to the to the forefront. So when the graphics come out, that's cool. But for the next like three years, you should be working on gameplay. But guess what we get every year? We get more sweat, more sweat, more sweat. And then people be complaining about graphics like, oh, why the graphics look the same? It ain't too much you could do when the, when, the, when the dead team is trying to max out from the rip with the graphics. It's not too much you can do. But I feel like I'm straying away from the subjects and stuff like that. Let me go ahead and collect my thoughts and let's talk about crossplay. This is something that I've been wanting for the last two years. Since 2K18, I've been wanting crossplay. And the reason for that is people did come to the parks and stuff like that, even though park on 2K18 wasn't that good. But it was kind of dead at times. If you have crossplay, you have Xbox players in there, you have PlayStation players in there, you have Switch players in there, you have Stadia players in there, and you have to somehow separate PC. I'm sorry, PC users. There is no anti-cheat for 2K right now. I know y'all are gonna be modding coming out there with the Hawk dunking on people as a pure slasher, max everything at 112. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, PC. You're on your own. But back to the consoles. As far as crossplay goes, wouldn't it be dope to do wagers like how Ticino did coming to America, playing people on PlayStation to have Xbox versus PlayStation? You know what I mean? Have competitive things and of that nature to give more players more reason to play the game with that competitive nature, but also with playing with their friends at home that just won't get a new console. Listen, my son and my nephew argue every day. You wanna know how they argue every day? Because Fortnite has crossplay. They add each other's epic. They, they, they're able to play with each other on Xbox and PlayStation. They talk to each other every day, and that's how their bond is until they see each other. So why not have the same thing for 2K? Why not have Xbox users play with PS4 users? You feel me? Now, the next topic. I told you guys how I wanted to be in a seasonal type of vibe, right? So let's talk about season passes for a moment. Now, this is something that Fortnite has offered to Fortnite players over the span of their game, right? Now they're on a they're on a whole bunch of seasons, right? They I think I can't remember, I think it's like season, don't don't even quote me, but I know the last season that I played was like season seven. What I want for 2K is I want their seasons to go within the time span of when the actual NBA season start. So even if they named it season one, if they know that it's NBA 2K 2019 or 2020, cool. You know what I mean? Great. You know that in that one time, that's your own season right there. So whatever accolades and everything you want to get, whether it's your rep, whether it's your items and all of that nature, cool. Because think about it like this, right? Say for instance, 2K says for Legends, for the first iteration of this new PS5 game, they say the Legends, that the people that become Legends get their own mascot 
creation where they can take from whatever mascots they have or whatever they can put on hand and stuff like that and make a mascot that if you got to legend on the first year of that season and you got that mascot every year that the game keeps coming out you can wear that mascot skin when you get get to that new level so when you become a legend on the next game or the game after that no matter how long it take you to get the legend see that's the thing remember i told you people could take a year off so say for instance the first year you grinded crazy got the legend because they said they got all these different um accolades and stuff like that you can get and when you get that stuff cool you can take it over to the next season but you say to yourself man i really don't got the grind in me right now you know what i mean like you bought the new game but you just can't grind like you used to maybe you take that season off maybe you don't get a mascot or a skateboard or a tiger or a jetpack or something like that whatever incentive 2k can give you to get to that next legend status in the next year's iteration but at least you have that founder's edition type joint like how like think about it like this when you see the skull trooper on fortnite right in the new seasons people go crazy you want to know why they go crazy because that's something that everybody could have got at one point in time so when you seen it you knew they was an og you feel me so why can't 2k have some of the same things you feel me like that that's what we really need so check it out right now as far as that goes i'm talking about items too so if you play the first 2k you buy t-shirts uh jerseys all that different stuff if the jerseys don't change like let's say for instance a vintage team joint right so if you get like the uh, minneapolis uh jersey right the la joint if you get that then that's cool you can have that you can move that item over to the next 2k so when you get your player to whatever overall to purchase those items from store and those those items unlock or whatever they're automatically in your locker unlockable to use they're locked until you get to a certain overall or a certain rep or whatever whatever level and whatever type of thing that 2k is going to implement right that would be super duper fire right that'd be super duper. you're like yo dang I, I spent 60 dollars on the game i got all these items in my first year i might have spent let's say 160 on the first 2k that ever came out right for the for that generational uh generation console right and you say i spent 160. the next year you can spend let's say 20 or 30 for the new dlc to the next map world whatever for 2k next season and you got all your items in your locker you might not have to make too many microtransactions because you got all that stuff. Remember, I said when you get to the next legend, you can unlock that founder's legend back. So, of course, I would say if you bought real NBA mascots, why not wear those too? Because you unlocked them, right? And I'll talk about my team later because I got something for y'all as well. But look, the next thing on the list, let's talk about the online moves for a moment. NBA 2K, my park, as it should be named, should be separated from my career. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of seeing my career get the worst like love ever because this is what happens when you play my career right you grind your badges and after you grind your badges you chuck up the deuce you get the 99 last year all through my career you chuck the deuce no matter what in the last four years every time you play my career whether it was a storyline or not you chuck the deuce after you get done at a certain point and just go online so i feel like they should separate my part separate my career if you go to my part and you choose to go that route you got to start from the from the brown shirt you got to start from the 60 or whatever you know what i'm saying you could pay your way up to an 80 or 85 whatever you feel but my career let's let that be something different let's let that be all right i created this build solely for my career i want to get a feel what it's like to play and play now with a creative player let that be like create a legend because what you're doing is you're saying that my career is the most played mode on the game and you keeping people going into my career in order to get to an online part you making it so people get into online rec online pro-am online any up why not separate all of those why not have it where you hit I'm, I'm gonna use fortnite for instance when you load into fortnite right you're in a lobby you can invite four people right why not have 2k like that when you load into park you go you hit the park button right you go into the lobby, you have an option where it'll say, boom, you click X on the My Park uh, logo, it'll say load into park or load into lobby. If you choose to go into lobby, this is where you and your friends can invite each other, go over game plans, go to my court, all that together. It can go up to five spots. 
So guess what? When you put five people in your lobby, park no longer pops up. Guess what pops up now? Rec Pro-Am. You can do all of that. You know what I'm saying? Like even if you separate Rec and Pro-Am from each other of my park as well, like which means you'll have a uh, play now, my career, my team, my park, my rec or whatever you want to call it, my pro and whatever they want to call it with the my, 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 my league, you know what I'm saying? All that stuff can be separate. And you can say load in, which is for rec, you would load in by yourself, play by yourself, or you can say go to the lobby. Then when you go to the lobby, you invite your friends, everybody's in the lobby, everybody got everything they need, they edit whatever they need to edit, jump shots, everything like that. Give us a lobby system, please. Because I'm tired of going to a park, then when I load into the park, I gotta change everything I wanna change and I gotta join on my friend again. So I've loaded in the park twice. There are workarounds where you can load into a park off of one of your friends list, but guess what? What if you load in a park off a of wrong build? It's, it's a lot, man. Give us a lobby system. So while we're in that lobby, we can choose what player we created, what build we created. We got his overall and everything like that. We load him up, he steps on the spot. Then we can edit whatever we wanna edit. And then when everybody ready up, you can go to the park as a unit. That's all I'm saying. Now, as far as events go, 2K, your best event ever has to be Puma Mania. That times four rep be hit in different. But all of the other events, some are lacking, some are cool. Some people say people are boosting, people are getting banned. I've seen all the tweets. I've seen agents video. I know that that is happening. That's cool and dandy. But give us a calendar for the fiscal year or whatever, like three months or six months at least. Give us a calendar of when these events are gonna happen so we can be ready. I'm tired of having to go to 2K's Twitter to find out what event is happening and stuff like that. Yeah, when you load into the park, they do have a slideshow of what's happening and what's going on. But why not have that in the lobby? Like on, like on Fortnite, it has a lobby for competitive. It has a lobby for events. It has, I'm sorry to keep comparing 2K to games that are doing well for themselves, but when you see other people doing well, you, you, you tend to go, what they doing over there? You go about that, you feel me? So when it comes to events, we need to know at least two to three weeks in advance when an event is happening. We need to make sure when we get into this event, let's make this event more of a lobby event. Instead of loading into the park and then loading into a huge thing that's making the park lag and all of this and people don't, why not load up in the lobby, you pick the event that you want to go into and you and your squad go into that event or you can go into that event solo and get wrapped up with other people so you don't even get to see the park and people in the park don't even get to see you. You know what I mean? Because guess what? When you load up in these events, it ain't like people all running around on the spots and all that. When you were loading the ruffles, you go into a tunnel and you in, and you in ruffles. People don't get to watch your ruffles games like, oh snap, I pot on the court on ruffles. They don't get to do that. So why not have it load up from the lobby from the rip? You know what I'm saying? Just give us better events. Let's talk about creators for a moment. When it comes to creators, we get a bad rap because we get that, yo, why y'all influencing so many people to play the game like this, to make a build like that, to shoot like this, choose a jump shot like that. I'm sorry, bro, people need help. And as long as people need help in a video game, creators will always exist. But what I want 2K to do is, I want us to give full access and creativity to everybody. Now, I noticed Chalk just came out with a tweet about him having a creator code and a link and everything like that. That's super fire. That's dope. I would love to do something like that. But what I want is I want the consumer, the people that actually have creative minds to do things in the game where we load up in the creative and we create different parks, different worlds, different, you know what I mean? Like, think about it like this. When you play house rules, right? Why every time you play house rules, they choose it for you randomly. But there's never an event for a creator of your stature to create your own house rules, choose your own courts and what those house rules give those courts for the creator. Creator codes is cool, but I want creators, people that have expanding minds to create dope events and stuff like that, that other people can play. 
things that may even get featured by 2K to say, yo, this is so dope. So many people are downloading this, going to this world, going to this map, whatever part, and playing those dope events. We should feature that for, for an event. Why not? Why not shout out the big time creator, which could be anybody. It could be anybody. It don't have to be a YouTuber or a streamer. It could be anybody that created that world, get the recognition that they created it in 2K sees that and loves that. And maybe even one day they can say, hey, we noticed you have a creative brain. You want to work on our creative team? You want to become a dev? That creates more jobs, creates more creativity. Darn, that's smart. So let's talk about content through the year for a moment. Now, I know that I talked about if you buy a t-shirt, it should roll over to the next game, right? But as far as content goes, now, you notice how 2K has the new clothing uh, integrations with different people. They had spray ground backpacks and everything like that. As far as content through the year goes, if you have certain uh, partnerships with people and stuff like that, you know how the battle pass thing goes, right? When a person levels up, whether they become superstar legend or whatever, if they level up in Fortnite, you know, you get different tiers for things. If you don't have the pass, you don't get the, the special stuff. If you have something in there where it's content throughout the year that people can get for incentivizing the money to you, cool and dandy. But what I want is, I want free things. I want content through the year where if we win it, we can win the whole bundle of things, package it. Don't say, okay, well, you gotta win ruffles, you only get to win two out of the five things. If a person wins ruffles, they won ruffles, fam. Why they gotta keep playing ruffles? Why they gotta keep playing the 1v1 core? Why they gotta keep playing 3v3 pro? It's too much. Gold rush is too much. If people win, they shouldn't want to come back and win it again because they got everything. And it gives more people a better chance of winning it. And I know it's a limited thing, but think about it like that, man. Like if somebody win gold rush and you say you give it to the, the top 10 or top 20 players, right? And you give it to them, right? The next time around, they don't have to play gold rush. They got the VC they needed, they got all the clothes they got, but I mean, maybe they might wanna play for the VC, but most likely they won't because VC this year really isn't hard to come by unless you're creating many, many different builds. If you're playing with the same build all year long, dog, if you don't got at least 200K VC saved up right now, you've been playing with the same build since the game came out, we got an issue. I'm just pointing that out. But when it comes to events, man, you just gotta make, you gotta incentivize it to say, okay we need more content out let's go ahead and drop gold rush again let's see how many players uh win it if like say for instance three out of the 20 players that won the second gold rush is from the gold first gold rush you succeeded you want to know why because people new people are winning new people are playing and the people have already won gold rush they get to brag and say bro already won gold rush what if they get like a certain tag like the gold rush jersey right what if it's say like maybe you have the event 10 times per year and the fiscal year of the game and you put on a jersey one of 10 three of 10 four of 10 so people know which gold rush you won and you get the bragging rights to say i was the first ever gold rush winner what up you know what I'm saying? And maybe you just incentivize better VC for the top spot to the to the 20th spot. So like maybe if you if you playing Gold Rush and you were the last person on the totem pole, maybe you only get a couple thousand VC. But if you was the one of the top three in the top crew, you get a, a ton of VC. You get 100K, 200K, 300K, whatever. That's content. You know what I'm saying? The the clothing uh business, right? So you notice how 2K got that type of uh here today going tomorrow type vibe with all the clothing where they want you to spend all your vc on the clothing and if it's gone it ain't coming back and then all of a sudden they drop three or four different clothings on one day and say it's only back for 24 hours and then take it away like that's content yeah that's cool but what you need to say to that company is you need to make more clothing because obviously if the clothing didn't sell the first time around Let's take Grungy Gentleman, for instance. They had two fire short shorts. I ain't like really like nothing else. But if Grungy Gentleman come out again with some new fits, I might be like, hold on, let me head to the store real quick because it's more content. You feel me? And that's what we really need. We need more content throughout the year to spin our VC, which you want us to spin. You feel me? All right, so let's talk about my career for a moment, man. I know that I kind of went on a tangent about my career and the reason why I want it separate, 
So peep this, right? When you load into the game and you play my career, right? And it's a storyline and all of that. And then after the storyline, you play your regular NBA games. Most people only played the first season of NBA 2K20, my career, because you were able to get gym rat after you played through the playoffs. After the playoffs, they don't play it no more. Now there are a few people that want to get to the Hall of Fame and things like that and break accolades as my career players. What I've noticed is, as a YouTuber and my channel, I played a ton of my career over the years. I've turned into an online player. I've turned into one of those players that need to have a thousand games played at the park, 500 games played at the rec. That's what I've turned into when it comes to 2K. Because the incentive to play my career ain't really worth it no more. But there are those times where I say, Don, I need to make a YouTube video. Let me record some of my career gameplay. And I'm gonna tell you completely honest, my career videos don't do really good on my channel. You know what I'm saying? Like they used to. My park videos do a ton of a lot better. Tutorial videos do a lot better. Like I've noticed that my career has got the short end of the stick because of the way that my career is represented because they mixing it with online. But what if you say, okay, 2K is gonna make the storyline a lot longer. Whereas though, you'll be able to age You'll be able to have new people come in your life, new cutscenes. They'll save all this data. So like when you get to a certain point in your career, maybe third season, 40th game, out of nowhere, you get married. You know what I'm saying? Like new, new, new storyline, it branches off from my career. Why not make my career like that? And then every year that the game comes out, you can build on that. And you can put your budget into that a little bit for the artists and the 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 actors and you know the soundtrack and all that that'd be dope but you had to give us a reason to play my career after the after the prelude it was over the storyline was done all it was was let's play our games now let's get our badges and get up out of there it was no more storyline left at least in 16 17 it has a little bit better storyline you know what i'm saying it lasted a little bit longer like my mom didn't even, I, I don't even know my mom on 2K to be honest. I ain't never seen my mom on 2K. But well, I mean, I've seen, you know the, the gray hair John. Yeah, we've seen her, but you've never seen her courtside for your first game. You've never been in the tunnel with your mom talking about mom, this was all for you. This is the reason why I got this ring. You know what I'm saying? Like what if those type of cutscenes really was there? You know what I mean? Winning your first championship, winning the all-star game winner, like, these things like Kevin Durant, my mom's a real MVP. Like, and your mom be, and they cut to the, your mom, and your mom in the, in the crowd waving. That's fire, bro. That's content, bro. 2K, that's where you got to go with my career. You got to make it offline, and you got to put a real nice storyline behind it and save those moments that my career players are playing for and give them cutscenes that they want to see. You know what I mean? Like, bro, just imagine, like say for instance, the way they made my career, they made it for high school, right? And every time you play the game, after the game or whatever, whether you did an interview or whatever, your mom would be in the stands, but your dad wouldn't be there, right? And then your mom would tell you, you know, your dad is really busy, he at work or whatever. And then next thing you know, you're in a championship game for the high school joint, right? And you bringing a ball up and a, sm a small subtle cutscene happened where you bringing a ball up and you look over into the crowd or whatever, and your dad is in the crowd and he's sitting down and you look at him and he look at you and it's like dang that little moment right there just cracked the whole storyline wide open i definitely want to play this because now people are going to say i want to see what happens as i keep playing in my career what cutscenes will i get what special moments will i get you know what i mean what special things will there be for my career that's what we need because think about it every game has a storyline whether it's Madden, whether it's FIFA, like all these games have storylines now. So if you wanna be the lead in sports game, you gotta make your story like stand the test of time, which is the whole season you've been able to get to the Hall of Fame within a certain, you know, creating all your um, accolades and stuff like that. Or maybe you can even say like simming five years into the future. You know what I mean? And when you sim five years into the future, those, some of those cutscenes that would have happened, like say for instance, you sim five seasons, and in those five seasons, y'all don't win no championship ring. Maybe in those five seasons, you don't get that special cutscene. Maybe you gotta play the playoffs, 
get that cutscene. Mama, I did it. I three-peated it. You feel me? What if you you sim two seasons, y'all won two rings, and now you're like, man, hold on, let me sim halfway, and then I'm gonna play this, and I'm gonna get my three P ring. Let's see if my mom come to the game, my dad come to the game, or whatever, and I three P. Maybe my wife. Maybe within seven, eight years of playing my career, you have kids out of nowhere. It's fire. And then think about it like this: if you create a character, like say for instance, you create um. A character for my career where when you create this character you can't change his appearance maybe for my career is solely you create the player the way he look whether it's a face scan or not you create the player whether he look the way you look and then you load in when you load in the people the the data that comes back like say for instance you're Asian and it says you want to have an Asian family your mom is Asian all of that boom get the voice actors you know what I'm saying boom come in you're African-American you're Jamaican you're Haitian you know what I'm saying? You're Puerto Rican. You're Dominican. You know what I'm saying? Like, that'd be fire. That'd be fire because all they got to do is tweak the data. All they got to do is, as soon as your face scan go through or whatever, or whatever joint you choose, you could choose your nationality. Why not? Why not choose your nationality? And then they get the, it could tell 2K system, like, give them that version. Give them that version of a mom and dad. Give them that version of a sibling. Give them that version of kids. Give them that version. And you maybe you could choose your wife. Maybe you could choose, like, if you want an interracial or whatever. Choose that. Maybe your parents are interracial. You know what I'm saying? It'd be f it's fire. You know what I'm saying? Because think about it. When you plan uh, Grand Theft Auto and you create your online character, your parents could be interracial. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's a fire thing to even pick. You can pick who your mom and dad is. Like, think about it like that. Before the storyline even turn on, you pick who your mom and dad is. And then from the, from who you pick your mom and dad is, maybe it ain't meant for you to get married. Maybe you say um, married or not married. You put not married. And you never get no part of that storyline. Maybe you pick kids or no kids. You don't pick no kids. You don't get none of that storyline. So that's grayed out. So you already know you never get none of that. But what if you choose it? What if you choose another My Career file? And this time that dude that's playing in, that, in those games is married with kids fire it's fire content man fire content but um what's next let's talk about my team man ever since my team has come out i've been upset i haven't been upset at any of my team players or anything like that i've been upset at 2k that every single year everything that these players collect pay for grind for everything like that is gone like that just gone because every year the next game has to come out so why not give my team players a chance to actually collect cards, to actually collect those things. So when they got those cards, no matter what, they got a diamond bird, that diamond bird is sitting in their collection for the whole span of the uh, test of the time of the generation console, right? Every, like you don't, like maybe you just, you can't grind for diamond bird, but it's in your collection. Maybe, maybe you say, okay, I, I grinded for Kareem. But I knew that the Kareem card wasn't that crazy last year, but it's in my collection, so I don't need to get it again. Maybe I don't need it. Maybe I don't need to grind for it. You know what I'm saying? What if you got Wilt one year, and you can say in my collection, out of maybe 3,700 cards, you got 3,300 out of the generation of that console. That would be fire. Because why not have Auction House and all of that type of stuff up there? You know what I mean? Whereas though, if you got the same card as last year and it's in your collection and it'll say in collection from uh, 2019 to 2020 season, all right, I don't need that card. I don't need to add that to my collection. Give give players a reason to actually play my team and what it's actually for. It's for playing online and all of that with real NBA teams with stat cards and everything, but it's also about collecting. But you take the collecting thing from players every single year and they have to start from scratch. Which is, which is crazy. Now, I'm not saying give them all their cards next year to play with. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is as a my team player, as a collector, allow them to say, I earned that card at one point in time in my life on this game. And it's in my collection. Now, every year when the game drops, yeah, you're gonna have to start from scratch. You're gonna have to start collecting cards and stuff like that. But why not give them a little bit of incentive? Why not say, let's say it, a battle pass or something like that, or a season pass or whatever, a my team player is allowed to choose one diamond card, maybe whatever emerald ruby, whatever uh, 
sapphire, whatever. Maybe they get to choose two cards from those. Maybe they get to choose three golds. Maybe they get to choose five silvers and 10 uh, bronze cards or whatever. And they get to bring and port those over to their new season, every season. And, in, and it's revolving, whereas though, whatever cards you earned that last year, you can only choose from those cards. So you can't say, all right, I got Diamond Jordan in my second year of playing 2K on PS5. So I wanna choose Diamond Jordan for my fourth year, no. You wouldn't be able to do that. If you didn't port Jordan over from your third year, I mean, from your second year to your third year, then your third year to your fourth year, it won't work. You can't port the Jordan over from the second year to the fourth year. So if you didn't earn Jordan in the third year, you don't get to port them over. And maybe you could carry a card for the whole generation span of the game. That'd be fire. Just imagine having, a, a um, let's say, a 95, 96 Bulls Jordan, right? But when you, when you, open up the card it can say card earned in 2018 i mean 2019 to 2020 season and then it'll say this card has been ported over how many how many times it's been ported over you you're gonna know because you might be on the 2023 to 2024 season you're like yo this dude was able to carry this card over every year in my team that's fire it's content man but who am i to say anything right I'm just a YouTuber that sits in his basement and makes videos all day, right? Yeah. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. The goal for this video, you already know it. Let's go for 20,000 likes. I don't care. Let's go for it. And also, don't forget to share it. But just to let you guys know, merch is out right now as well, if you guys uh, didn't see that. Um, anything else I got for you guys, man? I don't think so. I want to thank y'all for watching so much. Appreciate y'all. I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Peace.